Today I'm going to talk about uh, works, our works, our good works, um, or I suppose more accurately, the interrelationship between faith and works, because uh, we are not saved by works, we're saved by faith and faith alone, uh, but many will um, adulterate the meaning of that, profane the meaning of that to um, to mean that it's just belief that God exists, belief in maybe a set of doctrinal principles that is all that is required. So we're going to examine what the scriptures say. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of trespasses according to the riches of his favor or his grace. So the means by which we are redeemed is by grace. Um, and grace is given. Grace comes by faith. Acts 15, 5 to 11. Um, the disciples or, or the apostles at the time had um, a matter brought before them that was essentially the same. Uh, one sect believed that it was necessary uh, to do particular works to be saved. Uh, verse 5 says, And some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees rose up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the Torah of Moshe, and this is to be saved. And the apostles and elders came together to look into this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men, brothers, you know that a good while ago Elohim chose us that by my mouth the nation should hear the, the word of the good news, the gospel, and believe. This was, of course, before uh, Paul was appointed by Yeshua. And Elohim, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the set part or Holy Spirit as also to us, uh, the giving of the Spirit to the Gentiles was a testimony to the Jews that the house of Israel had been um, made a part of the kingdom again. Verse 9 says, And made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by belief or faith. Now then, why do you try Elohim by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So, it is by faith that we are cleansed. It's not by circumcision that we're redeemed. It's not by uh, doing the Feast of Sukkot or wearing seat or anything like that. Uh, that we are redeemed. Verse 11 says, But through the favor or grace of the Master Yeshua Messiah, we trust to be saved in the same way as they. Uh, Mark 16 says, He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has not believed shall be condemned. Hebrews 5, 9 However, alternately, he says, and having been perfect, perfected, he became the author of everlasting deliverance or salvation to all those obeying him. So we see that the scriptures, and none of these scriptures are wrong in what they say. They need to be understood in a, a manner where they are harmonized together. We're saved by faith, by grace, through faith. Also, however, we know that salvation is given to those who obey. We've seen in the past 
that obedience is an outworking of faith. When you believe the word, then of course you do the word. So when we see um, scriptures which talk about works, we shouldn't be confused because works go along with faith. If you've got faith, then the works will follow. But you're not saved by the works. This was uh, a large part of Paul's message, but it's in all of the New Testament writings. Luke 13, 22 to 24, it says, And he was going through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Master, are there few who are being saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, because many, I say to you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. If it was just a matter of whether or not you believe that God exists, then there would be no striving that was necessary. Uh, the striving implies that you are putting effort into doing it. If all that was necessary was that you believed that Elohim existed, as has become the uh, the belief of modern Christianity, um, the Israelites in the wilderness all certainly believed that Elohim existed. They had seen what he had done. He led them in the wilderness. However, they did not have belief um, of the word as uh, shown by their disobedience. So the, the teaching of modern Christianity is that if you believe Elohim exists like you believe in God, then that is what is necessary for your salvation. You believe that uh, Jesus died for your sins. Um, and that might seem realistic in um, and a world which is largely atheist or agnostic, where it actually seems like there is some element of uh, difficulty in believing that Elohim exists. But of course, in the ancient world, it wasn't a problem to believe that Elohim exists. Everyone would have believed in a god, one or another god. Um, the idea that it's just belief in the one true god um, misses the whole point. Um, our belief is seen in our works, and that's best illustrated in um, the book of James. And we'll get to that as we go on. Hebrews 4.11, speaking of how the good news was given also to those in the wilderness, says, Let us therefore do what our utmost to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. So doing our utmost, the same as what Yeshua was saying, strive to enter in. Um, once you've found the narrow path, strive to enter in by that way because many will try or seek to enter in and will not be able to enter in. And what the author of Hebrews uh, highlights for us here is that it is disobedience which caused uh, the children of Israel to go astray. First John 3, 7 says, Little children, let no one lead you astray. The one doing righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Yes, you have been redeemed of your sins by faith. Um, but that faith isn't just believing that God exists or believing that Jesus died for your sins. That faith is seen in your obedience to the word. You you can see when somebody believes the word and when somebody 
merely mentally assents to the word being true. They can both be described as believing, believing in God, but only one is what the Bible describes as the belief necessary for uh, salvation. The one doing righteousness is righteous, even as uh, Yeshua is righteous. Psalm 11 verse 7 says, For Yehovah is righteous. He has loved righteousness. The upright shall see his face. And yet it has almost become a mark of shame to say that you do right righteous works before Elohim. But here we're told that he loves that. Um, it is not uh, self-righteousness to um, to do things that Elohim says are righteous. Self-righteousness is defining it for yourself or thinking that it comes from you when actually doing righteous works before Elohim. They come from Elohim. He has told us what is right to do. And if we do it, that is not us going off our own righteousness. It's us recognizing that Elohim is righteous and seeking after him, believing in him, believing in his word. John five twenty eight to 29 says, do not marvel at this, because the hour is coming in which all those in the tombs shall hear his voice, and shall come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have practiced evil mat matters to a resurrection of judgment. So you can see uh, that it is actually uh, what you do which has um, a bearing on ultimately how you are judged and whether or not you will attain to the resurrection of life or the resurrection of judgment and it's actually all the way through the word it's probably a uh, a familiar phrase to you that he will give unto each one according to their works so you're not saved by your works However, your works are an outgrowing of the faith that you are saved by. So you will see this. Um, it's kind of disingenuously put across to people as, oh, so you think that you're saved by works. And it's, it's just not the case. People misunderstand what being uh, saved by faith actually is, what faith actually is. Um, and they also misunderstand what being saved by works actually is. Um, being saved by one's works would be that God owed you something. Paul explains this in Romans 4. Um, we are given his favor or his grace. Um, and it's a decision of Yehovah for those who come to him in faith to do good works by faith to show them favor or grace because they have acted in a way which is worthy of their calling. Romans 2, 5 to 7 says, But according to your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim, who shall render to each one according to his works. Everlasting life to those who by persistence in good work seek for esteem and respect and incorruptibility. So we do seek for those things. We do seek to be worthy of eternal life we seek for esteem or glory respect and incorruptibility that is that the corruption of death is uh, removed from us 
that we will be worthy to eat of the tree of life. So the idea that Elohim renders to each one according to his works might be confusing to some who say, well, that is just being saved by your works. It's a works-based um, salvation. That's not true, though. He will give according to the works of each person. But if your works come from faith, then that is what will be accounted to you. You will not, in fact, be able to do good works, not by faith. Because to do good works, to walk in a way which is right before Elohim, necessarily involves uh, doing things which are hard. And if you don't have faith, then you would have no reason to do those things. The only reason to actually do all good works is because of faith. That's the only way that you would be found in that position. Romans 1 verse 5 speaks of obedience to belief or faith. In, um, in Greek, it is just a word which means obedience and just a word that means faith. There is no word to that it's kind of like obedience faith is actually what it says. We see in Acts 6 that a great many of the priests were obedient to belief or faith. And again, at the end of Romans, ch in chapter 16, according, according to the command of the everlasting Elohim for obedience faith, or obedience to belief or faith. It's actually, the whole concept is summed up by James or Yaakov. My brothers, what use is it for anyone to say that he has belief or faith, but does not have works? This belief or faith is unable to save him. And if brother or sister is naked and in need of da daily food, but you sit, one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, but you do not give them the bodily needs, what use is it? So also belief or faith, if it does not have works, is in itself dead. So if you, if you are just speaking things, but they have no action behind them, of what use is it? The analogy that he gives is obviously somebody coming to you um, who needs certain things. If you just speak to them, it does no good. You have to follow it with actions for it to be real. You have to give them what they need. Um, and the same is true of faith. If you just speak as though you believe, it is worthless. It is in itself dead because it's not accompanied, accompanied by actions. But someone might say, you have belief or faith and I have works. Show me your belief or faith without your works and I shall show you my belief or faith by my works. You believe that Elohim is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. The implication that I take from this is uh, you better hope that your belief shouldn't cause you to shudder um, because if you don't have the works then maybe you believe that Elohim is God and that you are not doing what is right in, in his eyes if so then you should shudder um, your belief stands alone um, and is in itself dead but do you wish to know a foolish man that belief or faith without the works is dead was not Abraham our father declared right by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that belief or faith was working with his works and by works the belief or faith was perfected? 
And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed Elohim, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. So it is his works which constitute his faith. They're not distinct concepts. You see, then, that a man is declared right by works and not by belief alone. You can believe that Elohim is one. You do well if you believe that. However, if it's not accompanied by the actions, then it is in itself dead. Ephesians 2, 8-10 says, For by favor or grace you have been saved through belief or faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of Elohim. This is, of course, a verse which is beloved by uh, those who say, well, it's only, uh, it's only grace, it's nothing that you would do. Uh, however, it is saying that it doesn't come from you, it's Elohim's favor or grace that he's given you because of your belief. If you confuse belief to mean believing or mentally assenting to the idea that Jesus died for your sins, then you can go astray with this verse. It is not by works so that no one should boast. And of course, it's not by works that you are saved. It is by faith or belief that you are saved by Yehovah's grace, but your faith or belief will be accompanied by works uh, if it is not dead. For we as are his workmanship created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works. So you're not saved by your works, however you do good works, uh, which Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. If only people who would uh, put up the couplet of uh, verses 8 and 9 would just read on to the next verse, they would see, you're not saved by your works, you're saved by your faith. However, we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works. It was his purpose in us uh, being uh, redeemed that we would walk in good works and the verse which really seals the deal for me the one that um, the one that was most persuasive when I was looking at these things because people like to uh, pit faith and works or faith and the law against each other the verses in Romans 3 Do we then nullify the Torah through the belief or faith? Let it not be. On the contrary, we establish the Torah. It is the uh, base upon which the Torah is built, our faith or our belief. So if people uh, say to you, well, you're just being saved by your fit, uh, by your works and not by faith. Hopefully now you will be able to explain to them succinctly why that is not the case, why you are saved by faith. And this is a short enough video that you could send to them so that they can understand also. Yahovah willing, I'll see you next week.